this video, 30th of June 2013, an important video, important weekend because our stock market crash warning indicator went off. This is based on the commitment of traders numbers, comes out on Friday and been waiting for this to kind of set itself off and lo and behold, there we go, open my chart up on the close of Friday and there it was. Uh, so I'm going to show you how this has worked out kind of previously. I'm going to show you a little bit of the logic behind uh, you know, how the indicator is designed, but there is also a huge huge caveat uh, around this indicator. So uh, I need you to hold on to listen to the whole of the video in order to understand that caveat uh, as I kind of explain what's going on here. So first of all, how good is this, is this signal? Let's go back and, and have a look at uh, uh, what it's kind of plotted previously. So I've divided the code into crashes and corrections. Now a correction is a 10% move down from a high and a crash is 20% or more uh, move down from a high. So as the market advances makes 52 weeks highs and so any move down uh, I mark on my charts with a correction or a crash and this little show me indicator that pops up on the price bar shows the level of a in this case a 10% crash a correction I beg your pardon down from a 52 week high and this is the 20% level of a move down from the 52 week high and the stock market crash warning indicator you can see in this uh, sequence since 2010 warning comes up we go for a correction we kind of keep on going through here and you know almost reaches the kind of crash uh, criteria but it's just a correction during that move during this move here it takes a few weeks to kind of work itself out we go through the correction level and finally go into a crash so in 2011 uh, that was a 20 percent move down from that 52 week high then during 2012 there's the warning signal goes off we immediately come into a correction but we bounce from there so only 10 percent down and now we've got a, a warning signal gone off this weekend so what happened prior to that so 2007 coming into the highs in the you know global financial crisis and the correction we had here bingo there we go right at the highs there's the warning signal kind of goes off we make a correction here we come back up and we make new 52 week highs so this little bit of the code kind of resets itself and therefore it you know says from that new 52 week high we've made a correction level here go into reach the crash level here and we just kept on going if you'll remember down at 2009 Prior to that, the kind of the move up from the 2002-2003 lows, we had some warning signals go off here. Definite weakness that came in after that, but didn't reach correction levels here. Again, another warning signal goes off. We keep on going up for a long time until we finally get some weakness. So these two were kind of false signals. They didn't end up being corrections or crashes, but it was certainly made up for by this one. And then let's keep going back into uh, the 2000s and see what the warning signals kind of come up here. So uh, 96 warning signals, we definitely get weakness after there, but it isn't a correction kind of going on. Got a couple of warning signals here, ends up with a correction there in uh, 98, uh, sorry, 97. Then in 98, we get another couple of warning signals, ends up being another correction, and it, we keep on going. We kind of almost reach crash levels here. We get a very early signal here that doesn't work out, but then this one works out within a couple of weeks into a correction come back up and make another warning signal here that ends up being correction and then because we get make new 52 week highs we plot that correction and the crash and that's into the 2000 crash so we had a nice warning signal that kind of ended up kind of showing this move down so there we go that's kind of the back history of this one and uh, you know in terms of signaling corrections and crashes it's remarkable absolutely remarkable and I'll, I'll show you the code I'll release the code I need to update the uh, feature article on this one with all of that good stuff so I'll do that over the next couple of days but I'm going to release that code uh, and you can see exactly what's going on you can see the code is literally it's three lines of code to signal that warning it's incredibly simple so I plot this indicator on the SP contract, not the E-mini contract. And I've always said, whenever I'm looking at commitment of traders numbers, the uh, E-mini contract is really a almost a pure day trading contract. The SP contract is what people use for swing trading and position trading and kind of hedging, you know, kind of books. It's a lot larger contracts, five times the size of the E-mini. Uh, kind of tracks the uh, the market just like the E-mini. So 
uh, it's easier to put on long-term uh, positions on this and I'll show you some data to explain what I mean by that. Uh, so the signals are all based on the SP chart rather than the E-mini chart. And what I've got here is this is the commitment of traders uh, numbers simplified down below with a little bit of a histogram that swings positive and negative. And this is the net position of the commercials. So the professionals in the market classified as commercials and what they're doing kind of um, with their long-term positioning on the SP contract. What you see is that the uh, as the market advances, like here, they start to hedge and you know they go uh, they take on uh, short contracts and they end up kind of short positions as the market's moving up so they're hedging their positions as the market's advancing then as the market kind of gets to a pretty elevated level what happens is you know they end up taking off some of those contracts those those short positions they're either kind of losing money on those they're kind of thinking well why am i hedging if the market's just continuing uh, to go up and so on and we get these little blips little blips just above the zero line where the uh, professionals have actually gone uh, net long in terms of their positions and then all of a sudden they realize whoops the market's kind of maxed out and has a good uh, chance of kind of correcting and they decide to trend follow so during this portion of the market the advance here they're hedging because they're going against what the market is doing then they're taking off those positions as the market kind of keeps on heading out and so they're kind of in effect trend following uh, through this position through this kind of advance which means you know they're losing money on those short contracts so they're taking them off they reach some kind of climactic uh, position where they're kind of net long on their contracts and then all of a sudden they realize the market's kind of overbought it's overshot a little bit it's going to correct better trend follow and go go short and so we get these little blips kind of above the zero line and then when the market kind of reverses the, the professionals uh, reverse their positions and you can see that's exactly what we had in this list last weekend so you know through this advance they were kind of adding short positions then they started to take the short positions off uh, they reached kind of uh, net positive and then net long uh, they decide no this market's kind of overdone and they go short so big reading this weekend, uh, almost negative 12% in terms of the uh, uh, commercial positions, net short, and that's why the warning signals kind of popped up. So there we go, that's the logic to it. And I'll, as I say, I will uh, release the code in the next uh, few days uh, showing you how that works. But, and thank you for waiting for this, this is the huge kind of caveat that goes along with this signal. And what I need to do is to show you the difference in the SP and the E-mini contract in terms of you know how big of a contract they are kind of at the moment and what's going on. The last time I updated these numbers was in uh, 2010. And in 2010, uh, when I wrote kind of a large feature article on what is the E-mini, um, you know, some kind of details on the E-mini contract. The E-mini, uh, in my mind, had, had overtaken the SP in terms of the most important and the largest trading contract, futures trading contract uh, in the world. And uh, since then, uh, the uh, volumes of E-mini trading have continued to stay healthy. They're still pretty strong. Generally, worldwide, the uh, trading volumes have dramatically uh, decreased since the global financial crisis. I wouldn't have I don't have numbers kind of specifically, but I'd guess it's got to be in the region of you know 25 to 30 percent in terms of kind of volumes down in terms of you know equities trading, futures trading, you kind of name it. All of those things are down. The E-mini though has has held up. So this is what's gone on in terms of uh, E-mini trading total number of contracts traded per month, and you can see here we had you know the E-mini was launched. Uh, now I'm kind of uh, racking my brains here to think when it was was 97. So the E-mini was launched in, in 97. You can see very small volumes to start with, and then people started to understand this contract. And we're now sitting around kind of 40 to 50 million contracts traded per month, so over a million contracts per day traded in the E-mini. And we've stayed pretty solid over the last you know, uh, four or five years since the financial crisis uh, here and through this advance. By contrast, here is the SP contract. Now, remember, the SP contract is five times the size of the E-mini, so you've got to adjust kind of the trading volumes here. Uh, it's five times in terms of the amount of margin required, so that's why I'm saying it's five times the size. Uh, in terms of the total growth now, the SP contract, I think, was launched in 87. Uh, and in terms of total volume that's been going through here, you know, reached a maximum coming up to 2,000, about 3 million contracts a, uh, a month. Uh, which is equivalent to 15 million contracts uh, a month of the e-mini. During that time, the e-mini was just negligible. But ever since then, the market's just been coming off and off and off. 
and if we just blow up the last couple of months activity I mean we're barely registering you know 200,000 contracts which is equivalent to you know less than a million contracts traded on the SP versus the E-mini so a huge discrepancy kind of going on here basically all the volumes kind of just come out of the SP now along with that you can also see the decline and this is an open interest uh, in these two contracts so you can see you know with that decline in volume we've also had decline in open interest and with the increase in interest in the e-mini you can see the open interest has kind of gone up it's a fundamentally different kind of situation going on between the two and I've always said this the SP contract is more a long-term position trading swing trading type contract whereas the e-mini is almost exclusively a day trading uh, contract and there's a couple of things that you can see uh, with that so if the volume being traded at the moment you know th we had a spike because it was rollover month uh, in terms of volume here but we're looking at two to three hundred uh, three hundred thousand uh, contracts of trade per month going on here and look at the open interest the open interest is around you know two hundred thousand so we've got about roughly the same amount of um, open interest as number of contracts being traded so uh, that shows that people are holding on to their contracts you know throughout the day throughout the month if you look at that same ratio between of the e-mini, this is the open interest about 2.7 million contracts versus you know uh, 40 million uh, of traded contracts going through a month. So it's less than 10% of those contracts kind of being held kind of long term, if you, if you like. The other characteristic that you can see here, you can see on the SP contract, you've got these spikes every three months, which is rollover happening and you can see the spikes are roughly double uh, the size of the volume that's going through in an ordinary month and again what that is is people are rolling over the contracts they had in the old month to the new month that kind of those spikes are characteristic of a market where you know the continually holding positions rolling over uh, from old contracts to new contracts you don't get that same uh, kind of spike in volume with the e mini so that's showing that you know people are out of positions and they're just taking the next you know, con you know, kind of live contract rather than uh, rolling over kind of long-term positions. So there's a fundamental difference in the amount of open interest uh, between the two and the characteristic of the market in terms of these spikes and rollers and so on kind of going on. So that's why I've, all, I've always said with these kind of position trading signals with this stock market crash warning, you know, put it on the SP contract, use the long-term contract going on here, not the E-mini. The E-mini is more of a day trading contract. However, the collapse in the volume here in the SP means that this thing, I mean, it's turning into just a, a marginal a, a marginal futures contract. It's just so little volume kind of going through. I have to say to myself, you know, is the quality of the signal going to degrade because it's not a fully liquid kind of market and, you know, the number of players in this market is going to be smaller and smaller. Then I'm also relying on the CFTC uh, determining who's a you know commercial a major player in this market uh, for determination of you know what the commercial positions is so as this gets to be a smaller and smaller kind of you know traded market you got to worry about the quality of the signals that kind of it's generating and I'm sure that all of that professional money that was using you know the SP contract to position trade and swing trade has just moved to the e-mini so that's the caveat and as an example of that, let me show you how the commitment of traders numbers has kind of changed over the years between those two contracts. So this is going back to 2001. We've got the SP contract above here and the E-mini down below. And this is the net position, long short, uh, of the commercials here. And look at the, indice, the uh, axes here. So we've got on the SP contract, we've got at the extreme here minus 20 and plus 10 at the highs here and then on the e-mini we are kind of going up to highs of plus 40 and lows of negative 40 now back uh, in this kind of 2000s era you can see the swings in the e-mini were absolutely huge they were going kind of minus 40 to plus 40 and so that was showing that it was just really noisy data that was kind of being um, measured by the CFTC data on commitment of traders there and this was just really winging around too much whereas it was a lot smoother data on the SP contract here then as we kind of go into 2007-2008 what you can see is the swings become a lot smaller in terms of this data and they become a lot smoother meanwhile the SP contract 
has changed from being kind of you know relatively smaller swings and smoother swings to kind of larger swings over this kind of recent history here which again just to me suggests that you know the data is becoming a little bit less reliable for the SP contract and more of that kind of um, position trading swing trading um, activity is being done in the e-mini as the e-mini just totally crowds out the old SP contract and then when I put the you know the real test is when I put the stock market crash warning indicator on the e-mini as opposed to the S&P data yeah some of the signals kind of match up uh, together but the e-mini really misses you know quite a few really good signals and so that code does not work uh, as well at all on the e-mini versus the SP so that is the uh, caveat that goes along with this um, the warning indicator did come out uh, this weekend let's kind of wait and see uh, for me the next kind of critical level is you know the low of the weekly bar uh, gets kind of taken out over the next several weeks that's really important so if the market continues to rally we've been saying this the last couple of videos you know into 4th of July tends to be bullish um, you know we, we could have a little bit of strength this week you know kind of watch for lows of weekly bars to be kind of taken out uh, for kind of the signal that we could be getting into one of these correction crash uh, type moves so I hope you find that find that video kind of helpful. All I can do is is present the data and and show you how it's kind of worked in the past. But in my mind, I've got this kind of nagging, you know, feeling that that SP data is becoming less reliable because the market's just becoming, you know, more thinly traded. So please bear that in mind, and I hope your trading goes well this week.